The next one on the list is the note repeater. Now this is the MIDI version of the delay effect we use at an audio track. A delay takes the incoming signal, delays it, hence the name, and then plays it back. The way the note repeater does it is to simply repeat the MIDI notes we feed it. But it goes a step beyond that. We can actually choose the number of repeats and we can also have them be transposed by how many semitones we want. Now let's take it from the top. Uh, the input through button allows incoming MIDI events pass to the output along with the delayed notes. In simpler language. If this one is activated, you will also hear the initial note along with the repeats, and if it is deactivated, then you will only listen to the repeats. As with the rest of the MIDI effect so far, this little 8th note button allows you to synchronize the effect with the project tempo. The delay slider will let you adjust the values, and that will either be in musical values, or it will be in milliseconds depending on what you have it. Now the screen here will display the initial unprocessed MIDI note, which is represented with the bright bar, and the delayed notes which are represented with a darker color. The repeat knob will allow you to set the number of repetitions, and it can range all the way from 0 to 99 repetitions. Next to that we have the transpose knob, which will allow you to transpose its repeat in semitones. And next to that we have the velocity ramp, which will allow you to scale the velocity between the repeats, so either making each one quieter or louder than the previous one. And let's go back. So, to demonstrate the effects, I will use the world's simplest example. And then at the end of the video, we will look at some real-life applications, and more specifically, the one thing that this plugin is amazing at, creating interesting percussion and drum rhythms. So let's listen to the example. You get the idea, it's just a chord note every first bit of the bar. Now let's say, let's actually turn it on, and let's say that I want to repeat that and have a quarter note on every beat. So I will have to set my repeats at 3, which is fine, not 4, because we are actually counting the original note as well, and then simply select the quarter note. So 1, there you go, and let's have a listen. Now if I deactivate the through button, it will only play back the repeats. If I have more than three repeats, in this example, some of the repeats will actually overlap with the new incoming notes. So let's take this one up, I don't know, let's do six. And that's it. Now let's say I want to transpose its repeat, I don't know, let's do a fifth. And you can either drag here, or you can actually type it in, so let's do octaves, octaves work well as well. Twelve. And the velocity ram, that can actually change the velocity of the repeats. Now to the left, each repeat will become softer than the previous one. So, and you can actually see it in the display as I take it up and down. So let's actually have a listen. And when I turn this knob to the right, its repeat will become louder than the previous one. And let's have a listen. As you can hear, it doesn't make much difference. And the reason is because it is MIDI, and MIDI can only go up to 127. So if we look at the notes on the piano roll, everything is at 105. So once the next note reaches the 127 value, the rest of the repeats cannot go above that, and will also have to be set at the maximum value, which is 127. To listen to the effect properly, we need to make the original note have a lower velocity. So let's select all of them, and let's take them down to, I don't know, let's do 60. And let's have a listen here now, let's do, that looks fine.
And now you can actually hear the difference. Let's put them back higher. Also, if you click this little arrow here, a hidden menu appears. Now that will allow you to set the range of the notes that will be affected. And you can either have notes outside that range be affected or only have notes be affected within the selected range. For example, middle C, also known as, also known as C4, is number 60 in MIDI. So what I have here as C3 is actually C4. Uh, in case you're wondering, that is a setting you can actually change. You can either have the Yamaha tuning, or Yamaha if you are in the US, or the Roland. So you can go to settings, and then, yeah, display. Display middle C as either C3 or for Yamaha or C4 for Roland. It's the same note. Now, with the values from 0 to 127, all notes will be included. So if I take the minimum down to 60, you can also either drag it or actually type it in. That will mean that my notes above that, above 60, will actually be processed by the plugin. And if I play it back, only the first note, middle C, which is note 60, will actually be repeated. The rest are below 60, so they won't be included. And if I raise it even by one, then none of the notes will be affected by the plugin, as all of them are below than the set number. Also, if you have the minimum range higher than the max range, that will change the behavior of the range. So, let's say I'm going to do this one, let's do this one 70, and let's do this one 60, so lower. So notes that are within that range won't be processed, and everything else outside that range will actually be processed. So, actually it looks like all of our notes here will be processed. In any case, let's actually have a look at some examples you can actually use in your music. And I personally think that this plugin works great with percussion and drums. So let's actually go to this example here. Let's turn that off. I have this very simple drum beat, let's have a listen. And let's see how we can transform this and what kind of uh, happy accidents we are going to get. As it is right now, it will sound terrible if I turn this one on. So let's make the beat uh, less static. So let's do let's do eighth notes, but let's do them dotted. As you can see, it already sounds better. It's more interesting that one, and you will see that the dotted values are the most interesting ones. Right now, just have a listen, it's very mechanic. So let's play a bit with the velocity ramp and introduce some dynamics. So let's make it repeat a bit, you know, almost like a ghost note. Much, much better. Uh, let's play with the repeats and let's play with the transpose. Let's do the repeats first. And remember, you can transpose by octaves or whatever we want, so uh, it's not worth going more than an octave. Actually, it does. Let, let's, let's actually just experiment. I have no idea where this will go. Okay, that, that sounds interesting. Let's keep going. Okay, so I like this one. But there's way too many symbols in it. That cross is going on all the way. Uh, I don't like that. So I can actually take this one off. I What I need to do is just set my range, as we have already seen. 
And let's see, since I don't know what number the symbols are, I will start taking them down. So I know that middle C is 60. So middle C is here. And the cross is this one. Yeah. So I will need to, I don't know, let's start from 45. Let's go 45, type it in, start taking it down. Oh, well, 41. Yeah, 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 it, it is on 41. Good, so now I have the bit that I want with much less cross symbols. So we went from this thing to this. As you can hear, with very simple techniques, we could make a boring drum beat more exciting. And you will be surprised at how many happy accidents you are going to get, even with third-party plugins and not just with Logic's drums. And that is everything about the Note Repeater. I'll see you in the next one.